Hi folks, Anne-Marie Zadlik here. I was sitting down this afternoon thinking about what post I would start tonight. I'm really anxious to uh, get started talking about messenger RNA vaccines because I think they're going to be in the country by the end of the month and I think they're going to be approved by Health Canada any day now. Um, and in order to really uh, understand the vaccines and understanding is knowledge and knowledge means that we um, are less fearful of these vaccines and much more likely to take a vaccine. Uh, I think we need to understand more of the biology. Not everybody uh, has had any science or biology classes since grade school. It might have been grade six, seven, or eight uh, the last time that you took any uh, biology courses. So uh, I don't want to assume that anybody knows what a human cell is. So we're going to start right there. And what this illustration is, uh, this is the human cell. Uh, this is the COVID virus. Uh, this is how the COVID virus attaches onto receptor site and gets into the human cell. And the rest of the story we'll talk about later. So let's get started with some basic biology. This is fabulous stuff. Cell biology was one of my favorite courses at the University of Guelph many, many moons ago. This is a human cell. And our bodies contain trillions and trillions of cells. Our body is essentially made up of cells and water. And the cells differ from part of the body to part of the body. Cells in the brain are brain cells, and they provide function to the brain. Cells in the heart are heart cells, I'm simplifying. Uh, and they allow the heart to function so you can have your blood beating around your body. Cells in the skin are skin cells and cells in the lungs are lung cells or respiratory cells and that's the main cell that COVID-19 has an effect on where it does most of its damage. But essentially all of our cells are structured someone, somewhat like this. This is 10,000 nanometers which means it is incredibly small. The COVID virus is 80 nanometers. That's how much smaller the COVID virus is compared to the human cell. One million nanometers is a millimeter. So take out a ruler and look what a millimeter is. One million nanometers is a millimeter and the COVID virus is 80 nanometers. A cell is 10,000 nanometers. These are extremely tiny. They can only be seen under specialized microscopes. But it's remarkable how tiny the virus is compared to the cell. A cell has some basic structures. It has in green here a cell membrane and the membrane allows the cell to stay intact and allows for everything that's going on in the cell to stay in the cell. The cell has cytoplasm or fluid in it and inside the cell, this again is very simplified, are organelles or organs. Uh, you have organs all throughout your body. Your heart is an organ, your brain is an organ, your lungs are, are an organ. Human cells have organelles. And the most important organelle that we need to talk about about a human cell is the nucleus. We call it the center of the cell. And what's important about the nucleus is it contains our genetic material. And in humans, that genetic material is called DNA, which I'm sure all of you have uh, heard about. DNA is extremely important. It's kept inside the nucleus of every single one of our cells. And the DNA actually instructs the cell to perform its function. So it's the DNA in the nucleus of a respiratory cell that uh, charges that cell with its job of taking in oxygen, breathing out oxygen at a very microscopic level. So the DNA is extremely important, the nucleus is important, and each cell is different based on what the DNA tells the cell to do. And all of this communication between the DNA and the cell happens with proteins, and proteins are made in the cells as well. So here's a great big human cell. Here's a tiny COVID virus. The COVID virus is not a cell. It's a particle. It is not, it does not have organelles and it does not have a nucleus. It just, it's just full of genetic material, but its genetic material is RNA, not DNA. Human beings, double helix of DNA, the COVID virus, a single strand of RNA. RNA is its genetic material and apparently in the COVID cell or the COVID virus, there is a long, long strand of its genetic material, a long strand of RNA. So here's how tiny the cell is compared to the viruses compared to our cells. Here's the virus just a little bit enlarged and I want to focus in on the surface of the virus because the surface of the virus has these spike proteins. And here's a little bit larger diagram of the spike proteins. 
the spike proteins are on the surface of the virus. The genetic material in the virus, its RNA, instructs the spike proteins to be made or developed on the surface of the virus. This is what the spike protein looks like, illustrated. And it's the spike protein, when this virus enters into your bloodstream and is circulating around, it is searching for a way to enter into your body cells. And it uses the spike protein to get into the cells. Spike proteins attach to a receptor site on your cells. These are like little doorways or little holes in the cells, which will open up and allow certain things in, things that it needs to do the, the work that it does, Medications can enter in this way to, to alter a cell uh, so that a person's disease is, is uh, looked after. But essentially, you have the virus, its spike protein attaching to a receptor site. And when the spike protein attaches to rece the receptor site, and in this case, it's called an ACE2 receptor site, uh, it, it actually gets pulled into the cell. So it allows for a reaction that happens that opens the cell up and in goes the virus, spike protein, receptor site, all sorts of viruses are now in your cell. The virus can't do anything uh, in your cell. It can't replicate itself unless it hijacks your cell's nucleus. So it literally goes into the cell and turns your human cell into a factory that produces more virus, completely hijacks what your cell normally does, the RNA gets into your DNA, things are restructured in a very complicated way, and it uses the nucleus like a factory to reproduce itself. Then the cell dies, and the viruses are spread to the rest of the body. But in so doing, that cell dies. And when the COVID virus is in many of your cells, many of your respiratory cells, for example, in the process of killing the cell, it starts to damage your upper airway and if the virus is able to get down lower it damages your lower airway and then your lungs so as infection continues and the virus continues to use your cell your cells to replicate itself the cells are destroyed and your lungs become very damaged for people with good immune systems they might be able to stop the virus from getting past the upper respiratory tract which means you'll just have cold symptoms for people are who are older uh, who don't have immune systems that are as strong for people who are more frail with comorbidities they are less able to keep the virus up in the upper respiratory cells and it goes down into the lungs and it's those folks that end up in the icu needing intubation so that the tube can breathe for you because you're losing a lot of your respiratory cells Okay, so that's how COVID-19 takes over your cells. How do we stop this? Because in a lot of people, this makes them very sick or they die. And one way to stop it is for everyone to cover their mouths with masks and today stay six feet apart from one another. Those are the public health restrictions that allow us to prevent transmission of COVID. But what if we were able to come up with something that caused our immune system to recognize COVID and therefore to kill the COVID virus so that as soon as it enters the system, something in our immune system attacks it, kills it, and it never goes past your nose. And no one gets COVID anymore if they're immunized. Or in the case of the Pfizer vaccine, it's 95% effective, which means that 95% of people will mount a big enough immune response to kill the COVID virus. So here's how that works. In the COVID virus, there is um, RNA, their genetic material. And if you look closer at the RNA, there's different types of RNA. And one type, this is very simplified, is messenger RNA. And what scientists have been able to do with technology, messenger RNA vaccine technology has been developed for 30 years. This is not a new concept. In order to make vaccines, out of messenger RNA, what the scientists needed was enough resources, money, it, it's billions of dollars to run a research trial, and they also needed subjects, people who were infected with a virus, in order to run these large randomized controlled trials where you give the vaccine to one group, you don't give it to the other, and you see what happens. And in this case, when we give it to the, the group that gets the vaccine is not getting infected with COVID-19. So what they've done is they have synthesized sorry, this tiny piece of mRNA, which is part of the virus's RNA, 
back again. We were talking about messenger RNA uh, and how in a lab when you're making a messenger RNA vaccine you are synthetically making a piece of the virus's messenger RNA. It is not a piece of the virus that goes into the vaccine. It's not any part of a live virus. No part of COVID-19 vac uh, COVID virus goes into the va vaccine. That's important because live viruses can cause side effects. And this is not a live virus. I don't know how they did it, but 30 years of experience, they were able to take the messenger RNA of the COVID-19 virus that allows for the production of its spike protein and replicate it or synthetically produce it, reproduce it in the lab, put it into vaccines. Those vaccines are about to arrive in, arrive in the country, both made by Moderna and Pfizer. And when you get the vaccine, which we're all have, gonna have an opportunity to get very soon, as a matter of fact, goes into, I like to immunize people in the left deltoid. Okay, so goes into the left deltoid. And the vaccine circulates locally and is exposed to your bloodstream. So that messenger RNA is now circulating around, synthetic messenger RNA is now circulating around in your bloodstream. And it triggers your immune system. Your, your immune system says, hey, that, that particle does not belong here. We don't recognize that as a part of our body. It's not a natural thing. So in case it's going to do harm, which in this case it wouldn't have done harm if it stayed there, in case it's going to do harm, let's go after it with antibodies. And so your body produces these structures that go after, they're designed, they're made to specifically go after a spike protein. You see the site spike protein, the immune system responds locally, that's why you get some fever, or get heat, and maybe some sweatness and sweat, um, some redness and swelling at the site of the injection, and the body immediately starts to produce these amazing antibodies. And what the antibodies do is they kill the vaccine or they kill the virus before the virus gets into your cell. Beautiful stuff. Now you've just seen a spike protein synthetically produced when it went into your arm through a vaccine. Your body's just seen it. It decides it's not, it shouldn't be there, it wants to protect. So it produces antibodies that go right after any spike protein that's circling in the system. Great, but there's no spike protein anymore because you've gobbled it up, your immune system has gotten rid of it. And so the antibodies are kind of useless. They can just sit around and they wait. And so the body actually stores these antibodies in your body so that just in case you get clo too close to somebody with COVID-19 and they cough on you and the virus goes into your upper air airway to the back of your throat, your nasopharynx, it will try to get to cells to infect those cells so it can replicate itself, but it can't do it because your body is immediately signaled that it's now seeing these spike proteins again and it goes on charge and goes after those viruses and gobbles them up, kills them before they can get into your cell. Voila, 95% effective. People who get the vaccine, who see COVID-19, 95% of cases, there'll be no infection at all. And with the other 5%, what we're seeing is that they might get a mild COVID infection that gets attacked when the infection's just in the upper respiratory tract, but the infection doesn't have a chance to get down into the lungs. So I hope that explains it. This is all in reverse here. If anybody can tell me how to make a whiteboard YouTube video so that you can see the words that aren't in reverse, that would be great. I'm a newbie, but there you go, a second YouTube video on MNRA vaccines, mRNA vaccines. Have a good night.